What's going on, everybody, and welcome to Flashpoint. Man, yeah, it's been a bit. Oh, yeah, it's man. been a bit since I did this. It is I, Jim Connors, known as Austin O'Connor, and my special guest here tonight will be Joe MFD. Joe MFD. All right. So, like I said, it's been a bit. I'm a little new at this again. No, <laughs> look at me. I look like a bum, bro. So, <laughs> anyway, so Joe, it's great to have you here, man. So I had it. Like we all have questions. That's why I got you here. This is right. basically an interview, man. Breaking okay. the fourth wall is what we do here, okay? Now, MF, what does MF stand for? Because I know, like, some people, they joke about, like, you know, it's Man Fairy. He's Man Fairy! Like, I know, like, KCG Yeah, saying, yeah. Other people who say, like, you know, MF was something else. <laughs> I mean, people say the MF, well, at first it was motherfucking. Yeah. Joe motherfucking Dunham. And that's what I knew. <laughs> yeah, but then some of the shows you play, they got kids there, so you try to try to make something of it so I was just like oh it's it's whatever you think of it is it's, it's the mean faced the, okay. the the magnificent friend you know <laughs> like, it's, it's, man it's, people Not leave it up to their imagination you know? <laughs> <laughs> all right all right so now with that um, wrestling mm. this is all about wrestling here man okay we love it they probably love it <laughs> but now what got you into wrestling you know, like, was it someone or just, like, a family member? Someone scrolling through high and then, boom, there it was. Well, I mean, <laughs> I was born in 1985. Mm -hmm. okay. Probably probably prehistoric to some people's standards. But uh, I remember WrestleMania three, and watching that when you had to steal the cable box, the black cable box for the pay-per-views. Yeah. My grandfather was a wrestling fan. My Uncle Bob was a wrestling fan. So whenever we went over there... It was sort of like Thanksgiving or Christmas, and I was hooked. I was just like, these people, I thought it was real. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, these people are the coolest people in the world. They're, they're the strongest people in the world. I, I'd love to be a wrestler, but I was always a skinny kid. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's still skinny people that, you know, got was in wrestling. I mean, back there, then, you know, though. Back then, yeah. yeah back then, you had Andre the like, Giant. You, know, you had freaking... They always had muscle of some sort, and they didn't. They were still like you King know, Kong Bundy. Yeah, that dude was huge. I wouldn't want to fuck with him. So, like, what did you watch usually? Like WWF? Because I uh, you know, WWF sometimes like, WCW, WCW, and that that was a big time back. I think it was uh, late '80s when Ron Simmons won the title. Mm -hmm. I, I was watching a lot of WCW, and then my Uncle Bob he would he would buy tapes. He was a tape trader, so I'd see matches Japanese wrestling and all over the place so once it opened up I was just like wrestling's just not here it's everywhere and I was I was a fan ever since okay no, that's pretty cool you know like I know I know like now it's like all DVDs you know but yeah. I know like Tom had like a few VHS's he even like when UWF was around like you know back when he was like 10 <laughs> like it, was, it was him his cousins you know family would watch uh, they would always have like that like you know that old style like camcorder that's like, <laughs> yeah. that's, like, that's like bulky got the little cassette tapes that go right on in <laughs> they recorded all those on there and they would like rewatch them they made their own storylines and it was cool yeah. you know so like having the tapes hell I even have it with like Pokemon over there so <laughs> I remember <laughs> editing tapes skateboarding or wrestling back when I was a kid and, and you put press the fast forward button really like hold it down and it's slow bow it for you Oh, over yeah. the big line through the middle. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those are good old days. Mm -hmm. So now, like, with, uh, so, with, like, you know, watching WWF and then, like, even with uh, WCW, uh, who was it that, like, you really watched a lot of that? You know, like, who who was, like, your favorite wrestler when you were when you were little? Has that changed when you grew up? I mean, I never, it's sort of like football, you know. I, I don't have one set team. I, I mean, I have a set team that's, like, my top tier. But I have a bunch of favorite football player, f football teams, just like I have a bunch of favorite wrestlers. Like Bret Hart, he mm -hmm. was a good one back in the day because he was an actual, like pound for pound wrestler. Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, of course. Oh yeah. Yeah. But uh, it, back in back in the day, it was Macho Man Randy Savage. Macho Man. Yeah. I was just I was just like, there's no way this guy is like this in real life. And when I found out he was, I was like, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially with that documentary they had. Oh that yeah, one, man. Too. It's, uh, you it's watched crazy. that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like I think it was uh, it wasn't Peacock. Was it Peacock or who? Uh, it, was, it was. I remember it was. It was. It was something. Because it was the same like program that had like the uh, the WWE like museum where like they have people going out and finding like old artifacts of. Oh yeah, I think wrestling. that was um, uh, which program? Like History know, Channel or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. something. Because I know, like, I saw that, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, even when they found, like, Undertaker's, like, original, like, purple suit. Oh, yeah, outfit, yeah. And, like, and they had they had them come in and, and verify, like, Jake the Snake was like, yep, this is my bag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, I had the drugs in this pocket right here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good old days, man. Yeah, dude, with that, like, with Jake the Snake with his, with the, with his bag. I remember that match where, like, uh, I think it was Earthquake. Earthquake had... Uh, uh, he he uh, wrapped he wrapped uh, Jake in the ropes and like he had the he had like Damien like in the bag yeah and, he, and there was like in the middle of the ring he stomped around and then he just squashed the bag yeah yo dude can I tell you like <laughs> when I saw that I was like oh shit man and I know like hey, come on like I'm not that old. but like I was like oh shit man it's like k like, Fabe's over man yeah he just killed the snake <laughs> like he killed Damien, man. That's then, probably like, why the real WWE World Wildlife Federation mm-hmm. sued him because they're Dude. like, "You're stopping on snakes, yeah. what the hell?" Well, like I learned, like I did research looking into it, and I was like, "Wow!" So like, I found out that Damien that was inside was literally like pantyhose with like meat in there. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know. I was like, "What?" <laughs> I mean, back like in the day, wrestling, wrestling was more like a magic show, you know. Like mm-hmm. there's. I remember Jim Cornette said it, and he's just like, oh, yeah, you have them come out in a box. Everybody gets over if they come out of the box. <laughs> That's how easy it was back in the day. It's just like, oh, man, like, look at, uh, look at the, what, the, the guy that came out the egg on Thanksgiving. Oh, the egg. Yeah, Gobbledygooker. I yeah, yeah. Gobbledy. I mean, it's, it's sort of like Penn and Teller. It's like, now you see me, now you don't. But back then, that's what wrestling was. Now it's more like, they made it more like an athletic sport. Because mm-hmm. now it's like people are serious. There's no, there's no drugs, alcohol. People trying to keep their demons out of the ring, yeah. which, which is probably good because there's a lot of people we lost in the wrestling community because of that. Oh and yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, it still even like gets them nowadays too. You oh know, yeah. Like you know, they even fall hard into it or like they relapse. Like yeah. I mean, even even with injuries, like I used to, I used to do MMA fighting, and the injuries I got from that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be living with for the rest of my life, like, yeah. and I wish I didn't get into that and was safer about it because, I mean, even in wrestling, you get hurt and you just keep on going. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just gonna hurt you in the end. No, I know. Like yeah, even like when my job went out, I was like, oh, like <laughs> I had like literally like hospital time. I was like really thinking like, yo, should I like keep doing this? And then I was like, that was still fun, but like maybe I'll back up a little bit. And then I was like, well, no, I'm actually doing pretty good. I think I'll just keep going. Yeah. And now, like, some days it's, like, it's uh, not, like, when I talk too much, but it's, like, if I, uh, like, my jaw actually starts hurting after a while, I keep doing, like, a certain, like, uh, like motion with it. Yeah. Because, like, even when I play, like, D&D and stuff, I, I, I alter my voice. I change my tone. Like, I try to, like, do all sorts of funny little voices. And, like, <laughs> you know, and sometimes, like, if I move, if I move my jaw a certain way to do a certain, like, vocal... Um, instantly, like I feel everything again oh, yeah. <laughs> from that day, and I was like, "Oh shit!" I, I mean, I'm permanently like, disfigured in my collarbone because I broke it being stupid and young. Mm-hmm. I remember when I had a match in UWF where I short chopped somebody and my arm came out of socket. That, that was when you were against Cyrus, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and that you, that scared the crap out of dude, me. Dude, I remember you told, <laughs> you told me literally at the end of your match, like I think it was like not at the end of the match, but it was like another day. You're like, "Yo, dude, you know I like." My arm came out, and I was like, the fuck you mean? I didn't <laughs> notice that. When did it happen? Hey, I mean, there was times when I was really fighting that happened, and it's like the adrenaline starts pumping. The first thing you think is just like, oh, man, I can't use my arm. I got to make sure that I'm not going to die. Because <laughs> yeah. that, that pain comes, and you're just like, you get that feeling. It's like, I just need to go home now. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I finished the match, though. I'm mm-hmm. back in. I'm like, okay, I can feel it. And it still hurts, though, every day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, talking about, you know, with the backyard backyard uh, history right now. So, like, this is, so did you, like, you did MMA. Now, did you used to do yard or, like, you did, like, you say you didn't? Um, 
I mean, school, but like this was like your first time stepping into the yard, then, right? Yeah, so, I mean, like I did some backyarding with as a kid with my friends when I was in school, but it never was really serious stuff. We mm -hmm. camcorder it and stuff. This was before cell phones, but uh, I remember I think it was like 15 years ago, probably like 2000, 2006. Okay. I uh, ran into a guy. I know he's not really that credited, but uh, this guy Rockshaw, and my buddy was telling me, hey, he has a ring in a in a warehouse, and he's training people, sixty bucks a month. Okay. So, I paid for a few months. I got trained. Never had a match in that ring. Just trained and always trained. I go there after the mall after I got out of work and mm -hmm. trained. I learned how to bump and how to how to how to have sort of ring awareness but the guy that was teaching me he wasn't really there like and I, I <laughs> after the fact of me being trained with him and he screwed everybody over we went there one day and the, and the ring was packed up and he was gone took everybody's money and left hmm. when i got here i talked to some people and they were like yeah i know rockshaw uh i had a match with him and he took a bump in the middle of at the end of the match he was supposed to go over and he couldn't get back up because he doesn't train he he's lazy and he, he talks a lot of crap, you know. Mm. But he goes down, and he got mad because the guy pinned him because the guy wouldn't get back up. Yeah. He's like, that's the guy that trained you? I'm like, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, nowadays I'm getting trained by Yankee TDM, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's actually sticking. It's not, like, hit or miss. He's he's really good trainer, yeah. and he, he has a really good way of getting it through your head of the right thing to do instead of the wrong thing to do because I, do, I notice backyarders – that have been doing backyard for a while, they, they could have been going for two or three years, but they have in their head that they are trained. But in all actuality, they're not. Mm -mm. I've seen people that were yarders for two or three years, and then they get shit canned over the top rope and break their ankle because they don't know how to get shit canned over the top rope correctly. Yeah. And when I saw that, that's what made me like try to be a top performer. I always try, I don't try to outdo anybody, but I try to be up at the top of whatever I do and yeah. wrestling is one of those things now that I got the body type for it because I used to be 180 pounds with a big old head yeah now I'm now still got a big head anyway. yeah, <laughs> yeah I do but I mean it, it fits my body now yeah now I'm, now I'm 220 230 pounds I'm I'm in decent fucking shape mm -hmm. and shit if people come to watch me wrestle I will keep wrestling until so I, I want to I, I'm not stopping until I get to AEW or wherever yeah. yeah, and I definitely, like, wrestling does change, like, you know, like you said, when you know, used to be bigger, oh, yeah. wrestling definitely does change you, and, like, I used I used to have, like, no confidence a lot, now I sort of still don't, but I'm better at it. <laughs> Same here, I mean, I like, a, a lot of people suffer from, from, I don't know, it, what, it, what is the word for, self-esteem like yeah, problems, there you go. but, That's the, I mean, when, when other people tell you that you're doing good, sometimes you gotta take that and actually believe people, because mm -hmm. some people don't bullshit you, yeah. and when I started this wrestling thing, I thought I sucked, and even when people were like, yo, that match was cool, I still was just like, eh, but then in the back of my head, I noticed I'm a perfectionist, and when I think my match sucked and other people think it was awesome, maybe I should just take the, con the take take the constructive criticism when people talk about it bad, but then take a compliment when people are talking good about it instead mm -hmm. of just being down upon myself. Now, I mean, like, I've been wrestling for, what, like, two years now? Roughly, I think. Yeah. Two years. I mean, I got my confidence up that I could have a good match. Yeah. But you, everybody has those, those moments of confidence where it's just like, oh, man, I could have done something better or you missed the spot and you wish you could have had that moment to get the spot because you know you would have got a good pop, you yeah. know? I mean, it happens, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, you know, it comes like, you know, over time getting into, you know, like the, uh, like it's, it definitely, definitely takes time to boost, uh, boost the, uh, not the morale, but like, you know, your confidence up. And yeah. It definitely does. Heck, I remember like, I was during training the one time, uh, Yankee was teaching us like the whole like up and overs and stuff where like you, where like yeah. you, know, you bump and then you would slide over it, people would jump over you do like the whole like you can either do like flapjacks uh, sun, sunset flips yeah. and stuff like that so I remember it was me and Alan we were we were doing it and I I, was, I, had, I had to bump and like we uh, or he would say sound like you know when the person hits you and you bump you're both supposed to look at each other so then you know you're yeah. ready to do it. so 
we do exactly that. Alan gets me, I bump, we look at each other, and instead of like, you know, just looking and then going into it, we look, and I was like, <laughs> like as Alan hit the rope, Yankee stopped us. He's like, you he don't do, like, you don't do this, man. He's like, he's like, Jim, you motherfucker, what did you do that for? <laughs> You just give him oh, a look. Man. All right. You're going to go in a fight. You're going to look at the guy who just knocked you down. You're going to nod at him. <laughs> and you're okay. He's like, what up, dude? <laughs> yeah. And so oh, that's like, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it's, there's times that training could be fun. Mm -hmm. But I mean, when I come to training, I, I'm, I'm try, I try to be as serious as possible. Because when people do take it and they just try to be funny with it, nobody really retains any knowledge. Yeah. And it, that's you, you drive from wherever you're doing and stop your plans for that day to come to training and then you didn't you only learned half of it because the other half, the other was, half was people were just around. like fucking around yeah or like that one time I took a flapjack and landed bounced my head off the off the ring and like towards the ring or the ropes and yeah I saw stars and I was like Ooh. what oh. <laughs> it was like oh what's your name September. <laughs> September. Oh, <laughs> it was like, I was out, man. Yeah. Good Dude. times, though. Yeah. Uh, definitely, those are the memories. <laughs> definitely the memories you get to keep during the oh, time yeah. of some of the trainings. Yeah. Definitely. And it's been, even for, like, road trips, you know? Like, especially, like, you do, like, road trips, like, different feds. Like, I know, like, DBW, God, tell us, like, talk to me and Tom. The amount of road trips we went to, you know, to... Uh, to uh, judge, uh, Judgment's place. Yeah. Either when he was in PA or now in Maryland. God, the stories are just traveling back and forth between, like, when we had, like, Joseph Anthony. We had Eric Richards the one time. Uh, we had, uh, we had the dark side. Um, I'm trying to remember Devon. We had Devon yeah. with us. Yo, Devon, this man's always fucking late. <laughs> <laughs> I Devon remember I, I wrestled for runs. NUW and mm -hmm. I got there at the time he told me to be there. <laughs> I didn't see nobody in the yard. I was like, where is everybody? I get in there. Didn't, the show didn't start for three hours. Yeah. And then they were like, oh, you should have known. He's he's pretty late when it comes to it. I'm like, at the same time, I like the traveling. Mm -hmm. Traveling. And hopefully now that I'm actually getting noticed in my wrestling career, hopefully I'll be wrestling for maybe a federation near you. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. You know? I mean, like, it all depends on the traveling arrangements and like everybody it. got kids and jobs. Yeah. Like, I know, like, there, there's a few times where, like, we, oh, Tom got invited. He got invited to this one place in Canada. Uh, it wasn't Toronto. It was another city by it. Um, they, they, they were having a show that he was invited to, but he couldn't make it due to, you know, country lines, like, yeah. traveling. He didn't have uh, a passport, probably, yeah. Oh, yeah. There, was, there was another one, I do believe it was Minnesota. And that was, like, way too, like, way too late. Like, the dude sent him a message, and he was, like, three days towards the show and it was like yo man I can't make it why yeah. are you asking me now and then the recent one was actually from Aaron down from uh, VTW over in uh, North Carolina mm. and that uh, like Aaron I fucking love Aaron man I met him in I met him in Maryland first at <laughs> uh, Brian's place yeah yo this guy I love him cause like he he he, uh, he started teaching us stuff that like Yankee already taught us like he was, he was showing us like the, uh, like just like a wrist lock. Yeah. Okay. And he was like, now tell me how do you get out of a wrist lock? He literally asked us that. How do you get out of a wrist lock? And so like, and he was, he was testing it with, Ro with Romig and Romig was like, all right, so here he showed, he showed him, got into a hammer lock. <laughs> and then like he went ahead and put him to a headlock. And then he was like, Romig, let go of me. <laughs> let go. <laughs> so, like, he let go of me. He was like, brother, why did you do that? What is the purpose of literally, you know, getting out of the wrist lock into the hammer lock and then you instantly put me into a headlock? What is that bullshit? <laughs> I mean, everybody, so everybody has others. their different training mm -hmm. things, you know. Well, but it was, it was like, it was like you, ex you did so much work just to get me back into what we did in stage one. <laughs> so, yeah. And like he, he was like, you could basically, almost in any way, get out of a wrist lock. Anyhow, and, and, <laughs> and in real like, life, you like, know. Okay, so like, so I was like, I was like legit. I was like, I raised my hand. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, so Aaron, so how do you like? What are other ways you could do it? He was like, oh, well, if you're a heel, you use so much shisty shit to your <laughs> to your opponent first. Get Pretty out of much. it. Um, but like technical wise, um, 
technically stomping their toe out isn't a uh, isn't, isn't <laughs> it's, a it's not proud of and it's not a heel move either. Yeah. And I was like, really? So I could just like as a face just stomp the dude's foot, and then he's like, ah shit, and then I just get him into another lock. Yeah. I, I told you, <laughs> whatever way you get out of there at the lips lock. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Wow. So after that, literally, like, <laughs> literally that just became my full thing of, like, either I could, like, you know, do the whole, like, get into a hammer hammer lock and then, like, do that. Or I just poke the eyes now, like, right. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Because that was another thing he taught us, like, with heels. Like, with the heel work, like, if you're, like, foc- like you know, like, you're supposed to focus on, like, a body part that you hit and, like, you get on something. Yeah. Like, if you notice someone's leg is, is, like, you know, not working right, you go for that leg as a heel. If you're, if their arm is, like, you know, ah, oh man, I hurt my arm, they're, like, you go for that arm. Oh, yeah. But if you're, if you're a shicey dude and you rake the guy in the beginning of the match, keep raking his fucking arm yeah. until, like, <laughs> until you lose that See, I, I do a lot of the, like, if they're on the ground and, and I'm just trying to fill up some time and mm-hmm. probably talk some crap, I'll take their head and I'll scrape their face with my boot laces. Yeah. It's like, ah, it's like... Mm-hmm. Like, make, ever, make it make it make it seem legit, you know. Mm-hmm. Like ever since ever since he said that to me, uh, I basically just rake eyes all the time. <laughs> like, like, ah. Yeah, because he's like, you know, I could be doing this, and all of a sudden he's like, bro, I'm gonna my eyes, and he's like, ah, no, no. <laughs> and he's like, all right. So then all of a sudden, you know, match goes on more. I get him into a lock, bring him over. And then all of a sudden, Romic, break my eyes. All right, then, yeah. ah, he got me again. Yeah. You know, and then, <laughs> so by the time you get the build up at the end of the match, he goes for another rake, I stop him, and rake up his eyes. Yeah. And he'll blow up because of like, oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. So, like, you know, I, I fucking loved, like, just the small little seminar, like, he did with us. And I was like, I fucking love that. Like, he made it, like, kind of like a, like, it wasn't, it was a mix of, like, joking and serious. Like, he kept our attentions by being funny, but, like, we were yeah. still learning it, too. Yeah, you know, like Yankee does it sometimes too. Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, man, uh, about so like I know earlier you said about like you know going to NUW. Then uh, is there any other place you were looking to looking to go to, or like even like uh, anywhere in the Northeast? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, as long as the traveling is good. I mean, I got the car. Yeah, is you? I I'll bring my kids. It's just the whole thing of finance. If I gotta scope the place out first because I don't know if my kids are gonna be safe while I'm wrestling or who's gonna be there. If there's gonna be other kids there, yeah. I know there's sometimes a lot of young kids are getting into wrestling, so they're having birthday parties, and I wouldn't mind doing that, bringing mm-hmm. the kids to the birthday party. They're having a fun time. I get to wrestle. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, shit. Anywhere I can get paid to do it. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So, so like, with the backyard. Uh, so like you've been around for like two years right now. Yeah. What's uh, what would be like the one match you always look back at? Like usually like you know like you've been re- like you know wrestlers who's been going on for a while they always have like a list of matches they like personally like bring up and they remember and they like to talk about it. A lot. Oh man. Like, like it could either be like you know like has a funny story to it or it's like something like just very like uh, like meaningful that brought up like me. Like I had, I had like a few matches that like I always like remember. Um, like I could bring up the one between like me and Cyrus during like the first ever Stanley Clash, and I was like, yeah, I introduced the gauntlet. You know, I, I was dressed up as Ant Man. I had like a whole like you know setup to where like my my theme played and nothing. I like I didn't come out. Cyrus comes out. He's like, where is he? And all of a sudden, like I, I appear right behind yeah. him. <laughs> because I was Ant Man. So, so oh I looked at him like Bruce. Oh my god! <laughs> and, and, like, I like crawled under like the camera area. And I knew where the camera like sco- like camera like angles were. <laughs> so like I was just wait at the right moment, and I like, I would just you? pop up like at Bruce, and then I just started attacking him. But like I remember oh, like man. that match. Like I was like, so so Steve, I want to hit this, 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 and this. And he was like. Okay, I got you. When do you want to do that? We'll figure it out in the match. Because <laughs> we, we didn't have enough time to actually talk about our match. I mean, I had a couple of... Like, the one match where I thought I shit myself. Mm-hmm. That was... Uh, I was going against Clark Williams. Yeah. And he had his comeback. And when he hit those ropes, it was so hot that day. I was just like, oh, man. And this was this was the last match Clark was in UWF. Yeah. So, like... Half of the half the spots we came up with the night before, we had to throw out the window because it was just way too hot on the mat, mm-hmm. and we had to throw away the finish because he hit he he came off the ropes and he hit me with this elbow drop right in my stomach, and I just was like, all I heard was, <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, my 
finisher is the MF bomb. His head is going right down there for an the MF bomb. <laughs> and I was like, I respect this man. I respect this. I'm not going to do that to him. Because oh at the time, yeah. I didn't want to fucking just check my pants yeah. in the middle of the ring. It's, it's being recorded. There's a live audience. I'm mm-hmm. like, fuck. I, I ain't going to question it. So yeah. I'm just like, just pick me, bro. Just pick me. So he puts me in his finish. Gets me one, two, three, and then I just laid there. Yeah. And I was just waiting for somebody to say cut so I could just crawl out of the ring, go to the bathroom, and check the shit. Oh, my God. But, I mean, the next day we laughed about it. Mm-hmm. But, like, <laughs> I'll always remember that match. And the last match I had at NUW okay. with Caleb Cross yeah. and, and Alan Reed. Okay. I hit myself in the hand on accident with a metal baton, and now I can't feel this part of my hand. <laughs> Probably should go to the hospital, but it shit. Probably yeah. should. But yeah. you know, that that's just me. Like, you know, if it's like nerve damage, well, yeah, it's gonna be a problem. I mean I can still I can still move it. It's like I just can't feel it on yeah. the skin. I could probably burn it and nothing, nothing bad. I mean, you know, you know, like you're working in like a kitchen, you know, you know, you're gonna be like, you know, hey Joe, how's the chicken wings coming? You're like frying the wings, so you're like, yeah, they're coming well. <laughs> and you lift it up, your fingers like half, half like fried, and you're like, huh? I didn't feel that. No, it's like I just think it's like it's like kick ass. He has the yeah. fucked up nerve endings, and I'm like, all right, that's cool. Now let's see if it could happen throughout my body. I don't know if I would want that. But. Yeah, no, like no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I. I have a lot of pre-existing injuries that mm-hmm. I, from either being stupid, doing athletic things, or wrestling. Or wrestling, yeah. I mean, wrestling definitely does give you that. <laughs> but then again, you did say MMA, so. Yeah, but I'd, I'd rather, like, that's why I got out of MMA. It's just like after you're fighting people and hurting them. Yeah. And then you're, I turned over a new leaf from being a violent person and liking the violence to, man, I really don't want to do this anymore to anybody. Now I'm in wrestling, and you hang out, you're chilling out, you smoke a J with your buddy, and then you go yeah. have a good wrestling match, and then <laughs> afterwards, nobody's hurt. Mm-hmm. Nobody's, like, piecing together their face again and being like, yeah, man, it's all good. It's like, yeah. I remember, I, I almost got my jaw broken with a super kick. The first match I ever had in UWF ring. I heard you go again. Uh, that was, it was, uh, it was a rumble. Oh. Okay. And I just showed, and I, I was, at the time, I, I just felt like a mark. I was just like, yeah, yeah, I was 300 pounds. I brought my gear to the to the match. Yeah. And then they were like, yeah, man, somebody didn't show up. Is there anybody ready to wrestle? I'm like, I got my gear. <laughs> so I gear up. They tell me the spots. I'm nervous as fuck. I yeah. run in there. I just start cleaning house. And then I think it was Mike Perillo and, and Johnny Reed. Okay. I get put in this move, and then Johnny's just like, yeah, man, throw me over the top, and I'm going to come up, and I'm going to do this, that, and the other. And... I didn't know he was going to super kick me. So I'm on the ground after he drop kicked me. And I, ju- I was on my knees when he drop kicked me. So I'm still like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. I really got just drop kicked in the face. So I'm getting up and I hear Mike go, get ready, get ready. So I'm like, what? Get ready for what? <laughs> Turn around, super kick right to my jaw. And I was legit like knocked out for like three seconds. Oh, God. And I was just like. I wake up and all I remembered was when they told me the spot I had to look for. I'm looking for Happy the Clown because mm-hmm. that's when I need to. Oh, I <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what I, I need to be that, by man. the end of the ring and then get pulled out. So I was like, "Where's this clown?" So then I start really thinking. I'm like, "I think I, my head got knocked over for a loop. I don't know what the fuck is going on right mm-hmm. now." So I'm looking around, so I try to see what the fuck the dudes are. So I start beating the shit out of people. <laughs> At the time, I was actually stiff too. So oh, okay, yeah. I felt sort of bad because I. I tried to work punch and I cracked somebody right in the head, top of the head. They were like, lighten up, brother. And oh, I'm like, oh, I felt so, you feel bad, but yeah. when you start learning how to pull your punches, mm-hmm. you still, even then, you still, I got like cracked I in the head. Sometimes you can still get hit even with like the pulled punches. But good sportsmanship. I had matches like with Joseph Anthony. That yeah. dude, good guy. He knows exactly what to do in a wrestling match when something goes wrong. Mm-hmm. I was, I was... I was blown up, so I swung, cracked him in the top of the head on accident pretty damn hard. And right when I said, sorry, brother, he cracked me right on the top of the head, too. He's like, keep it going. I'm like, all right, let's go. I, I love those type of matches when it's stiff. It's just like I had the match with Yankee TDM, mm-hmm. and I felt sort of bad because I fucking, I was like, I was so like amped up because I'm yeah. wrestling my trainer. 
I fucked him up a little bit. I cracked him right in the face with my elbow, and I was like, oh, shit. Oh, that was during his defense. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, oh, man, this one. dude's going to fuck me up. <laughs> but no, at the end of the day, he's just like, yeah, you were a little stiff. I know that. I could have been stiff back, but I know you were, you were all like, yeah, 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 slow mm-hmm. down, slow down. But that's just how I am. I get excited. I'm like a kid watching the wrestling match, but I'm in the wrestling match. Like I'm playing WWE. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like instead of like, you know, controlling the wrestler to do the moves, you're actually doing it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Being a gamer and you're like, I know you know how that feeling is. You you play video games enough, you, you, you tend to know how a wrestling match should look. Yeah. <laughs> and especially like if you start like seeing it and like you're imagining it and then once you're actually in it, it's like, oh, like, you know, yeah. it's great. I still can't wait to like I. Everybody keeps saying there's always this big spot that you're gonna do in your wrestling career that makes you like this is this is it. You know, I haven't had that spot yet, mm-hmm. but I'm getting to the point where there's gonna be that spot. And when yeah. you see that six foot five motherfucker getting fucking taking a bump from like ten feet up in the air, you're gonna be like, <laughs> what the fuck just happened? He just he just did it. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine an MF bomb off the top rope. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Dude, I know, like, I, I, I didn't have a moment like that yet, but, like, I definitely had a moment where I was, like, super, like, I was kind of happy, and that was, like, in, like, Maryland. Yeah. And it was, uh, I was, I was in a, I was in the Anarchy match, okay? Like, the Anarchy is basically, like, anything above, like, a 1v1. So, like, it's basically, a, like, a, like a, uh, a three-way, you know, a, a four, quadruple, whatever. Very much, it can never just be one on one. It's just like so a bunch of people. Are in a it. bunch of people are in it, and yeah. like the Anarchy champ has to like defend his title in that. And whoever gets pinned becomes the champ. You don't even have to pin the champ to become the champ. <laughs> so like, it's always like a free for all against each other. And like, I remember it was me, uh, Mr. Judgment, and then it was uh, Raw and Havoc. Okay, and. Dude, like, that was the match where I was, where I was told, I was like, all right, so you're winning, Jim, okay? And, I was and like, you were like, what? Like, yeah. yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm fucking winning. <laughs> and, and, like, and, like, Judgment's like, yeah, and you're pinning me for it. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, what? Dude. So, so I was like, okay, all right, cool. So let, let's fucking do it. So, and he's like, so how, uh, I already have an idea for the finish. And, he, and I was like, all right, cool. So what's the finish? So in DBW, I have that Lego chair. It's like, oh, chair all Legos yeah. glued on and shit. So, like. He was like, I want you to do the DDT on the chair with me. And I was like, all right, all right, I can do that. But I want, like, my head in the chair. And I was like, good. <laughs> so I like, get the back of the chair. Like, you realize the there's and the seat's Lego here. super glued yeah. on in this chair. His head's going to be in the in the part where, like, you know, his neck is going to be where, like, the back of the chair is. And, like, his body's, like, near where, like, the chair piece is. So I got him up, got him into it, ddt him. <laughs> but, like, that was also the same match to where, like, I was like, all right, so, all right, so, Brahma, just go ahead and, like, I was like, listen, I'm going to get you in this corner, uh, reverse it, do a move to me, and I'll just uh, do it something. So he he, uh, he got, uh, so I went to go get him, I was like, oh, he dodges out of the way. I hit the corner, I'm like, oh, man, my head, I turn around, I get like this, and I'm like, all right, so what's he going to do to me? All of a sudden, I see him on my on my side right here. Go over, lean back, and like lean forward. And I'm like, what's he doing? Goes in for a big boot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> goes in for a big boot. Boom, right into the same side where I got my jaw before. Oh, and I was like, ah, oh, big R. Yeah, like, it's like, yeah. And I was like, it. oh no, my jaw's back. <laughs> so, and like, I was like, yo, Brian, you got the jaw, man. And he's like, what? And I was like, all right, so listen, work on havoc for a minute. I'm gonna like. See if I can make sure I can still talk. <laughs> and so, like, he goes over to Ron and he's like, "All right, so listen, Jim got hit in the face." <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> Dude, when stuff like that yeah. happens in a match, mm-hmm. it's like once the crowd goes silent, because yeah. then you know it's like, oh crap! Well, Everybody they, knows they didn't go silent. They just oh, they're like, yeah. Because, like I was, <laughs> I was the big time heel. Like this was literally when I was like going to the heel stage and I like, skyrocketed up. Yeah. Because I was like, yeah, this is my. I think it was like Judgment Day. I was like, it's my Judgment Day or something. I was like literally talking like this, <laughs> like a like a like an Elvis with, with other marbles in his, oh, in his man. mouth or something. <laughs> Damn. And like that was the same night that like. That like me, Tom, and like Joseph Anthony, and like even it was Devon. We were all talking. And I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna go to strip club when when we all win our titles." And you wanna know something? They're like, "Yeah, we're gonna cancel it because like Jim Jim's in the fucking hot ER, man." And then all of a sudden, here I am. I show up eleven o'clock at night, and I'm like, 
We're going to bat! And like, I'm, like, I'm like ready to go still. Title, title, title across over my your chest. shoulder, like title on my shoulder across, like you know, get I'm like, yeah, I'm like high on my bed. So I'm like, yeah, we're gonna go. <laughs> oh man! So, now we are gone until 4 a.m. <laughs> Dude, I've got to like the hotel, that. and I was promptly woken up at six because we had to leave the hotel. Then. <laughs> oh, man. See, there's, I, I, thank God I stopped with the partying thing because I know if I travel, I'm going to be level headed mm-hmm. and shit like that ain't going to happen. But I mean, having wrestling matches that are awesome like that, even parts like that where you almost get fucking really hurt. Mm-hmm. Afterwards, you're just like, that was awesome. Yeah, you know? it's, nah, it's like, like it's a, it's like a, it's like a funny story almost. Like, yeah, I'm like, hey, dude, you want to know how like I got my jaw went? And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, so this how I. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there's there's times. I know there's going to be more times that the big spots are going to happen, and mm-hmm. I'm either going to get hurt or come out unscathed and be like, I'll see it on camera or see it on YouTube somewhere, and I'll be like, Yeah, I almost died. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, chalk that up on the on the list of how many times that I almost die. Mm-hmm. You know, I have been hit by. I've been ran over by a truck. I've been hit by a car. <laughs> I've been in so too many fights to even imagine. Mm-hmm. I almost lost my hand getting bit and caught gangrene. Oh, shit. Broken bones and shattered shit and internal bleeding. Just like, just like fire when, fire. When, <laughs> when, when, when you were doing the stuff that I used to do back when I was younger, it's like there, a, a week, there, there was a good week when you didn't get in a fight and then had to drag somebody down the street and beat them until they pissed blood. <laughs> But I mean, you could either stay there or find something that you can do to get get yourself out of that situation. And that's what wrestling did. Like I was, I felt like I was washed up and my life was at a point where it's just like, I'm pretty confident in just sitting here and dying. <laughs> like, yeah. And being in that mode of, like that mindset, being depressed and being like, I ain't gonna do nothing in my life. It messes you up mentally. And, like, I remember I watched a UWF, and I was like, a UWF episode, I think it was Match Madness, about, mm-hmm. two, like, two and a half, three years ago. Okay. And when I saw it, I was like, I know some of the people that are wrestling here. And my girlfriend at the time was like, you know, I think you, you got enough wrestling knowledge. I bet you could get in there and do it good. And I'm like, and, but I'm 300-something pounds. I, all I do is play video games and sit in my house. Yeah. I, I can't. I, I'm not in no ring shape. And then uh, the juggernaut, or there yeah. was the juggernaut, <laughs> fucking, what a chaos. And yeah. that wrestler, I, I went to school with him since elementary school. And he hit me up and he goes, because back in the day, I used to I used to be a badass dude. It's mm-hmm. like, so you still can wrestle, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about now, but I could commentate or be a manager. He's like, come up to the ring. So I came up to the UWF ring. And then, I don't know, dude. The minute I saw it was a legit ring. It wasn't a bunch of tires on pla- uh, plywood and yeah. all that crap. I was like, holy crap, this is actually legit. I hopped in the ring, did a couple of moves, and then I think Juggernaut was the biggest guy you had in the Federation at the time. Yeah, he's the tallest one. Yeah, he's just like, he still can suplex, right? And I'm like, eh, let me see if I can do it. I suplex him in the ring. First time. Mm-hmm. And then Tom was just like, I didn't see that. It doesn't count if I didn't see it. So he's on the out, out on the apron. I, I reached over, I suplexed him over the top rope, and landed perfect. And he goes, so you definitely got to wrestle for us. And I'm like, dude, I, <laughs> I'm a lazy piece of shit. And you're like, dude, like, I don't want to do this. I have, <laughs> I have probably bigger boobs than your wife. Like, I can't do that. I, I could be a commentator or a manager or something. He goes, no, nah, dude, you just, you just suplexed the biggest guy in our federation. You need to wrestle. Mm-hmm. So once I was told that, it sort of overrode my, my self-esteem problem. And it was just like, oh, so now what? Now, somebody's in need of somebody my stature and my size. Mm-hmm. So then after that, I just took it serious. Never took wrestling serious until that day. And I remember you were there that day. It's just, I don't know. I never thought I had it in me. And then all of a sudden now, it's like two years later, I've had some great fucking matches. Yeah. And I've had some, I had some, I met some really cool people, you know. And I lost a hundred something pounds. 
I feel like I'm in the greatest shape of my life because wrestling saved me from being in that dark place. And now it's like, I, I, I'm motivated for the fans, you know? It's like whenever, when people come to our shows and I'm like, I need to, I need to act the best I can act as Joe motherfucking Dunham because I don't want these guys to be cheated out of a wrestling match or an event, you know? Mm-hmm. I'll wrestle three times in a night if it if I need to. <laughs> uh, hey, you know, if you're saying that you wrestle more, tell me about like, like who would be like your like dream matches? Like no. who do you want to face? You know, like you don't have to give me like everybody. Just say like you know, say like your top three maybe who you want to wrestle. Uh, in the independent circuit or pro? Yeah. Either anywhere, anywhere like backyard, like you know, backyard. I was going to ask, but like if you were to like. If you were to get right up there and like even the professionals, who would you want to wrestle? Like who'd be like uh, your like number one like yo bucket list? Like I need to face you, man. Like, like uh, I don't know. I've had I've had matches with most of the people I wanted to match. Like Felix, I, he he's him and Navon McDonald. I I wrestled Navon before, but it wasn't. It was Arnold. It, it was yeah. Arnold. But I want to have a real match with Navon. A real match with Felix. Because I know him and Yankee, they, they put in some fucking work. And mm-hmm. I had a match with Yankee, and it was a, it was a great match, you know. But, uh, yeah, Mike Fresh, I'd love to have, yeah. a, I'd love to have a match with him. Um, there was a few people at the, the MVW show I saw on Sunday that I, I would love to get in the ring. Like that dude, Bruno? Yeah. I know I could learn some stuff from him. But, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people I wouldn't mind stepping in the ring with, but... It's all. It all depends on if, if they give me the opportunity. Yeah. I'm a very. I'm a very humble person when it comes to this. I mean, I still think I have a lot to learn in the ring, which everybody does. But if people gave me the opportunity, I wouldn't. Put, I wouldn't. I wouldn't make them disappointed at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think it's. I think it's time we're getting close to uh, wrap up the show, man. Yeah. So with one last question. Okay. Now this is a in character. Uh-huh. In character. All right. What would you say that people should look out for for Joe M. F. Dunham for the future? So like this is gonna be you know this is probably gonna be posted up a little little bit because uh, a lot of our stuff's already been filmed right now. Yeah. You know for like next year for like twenty twenty three. No, no, twenty twenty two. What am I doing? We're still twenty twenty one, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, like, literally had, like, a blank. I was like, oh, dear God, what year was it again? <laughs> Man, for 2022, let me tell you, when Joe MFD comes by, you know he's going to look fly. Anywhere in the Northeast area, if you want your whole entire federation to get their ass beat and MF bombed till the point of semi-mental retardation, you know where to find me. I'm in the UWF ring, and I don't think anybody anywhere can handle my MF bomb. Just, I'm not, I'm not tuning any horns, but <laughs> I, I, I just think you won't be ready for the strength, the, the determination. I think you'll be baffled. You won't even know words. And I think I'm coming through like a bat out of hell throughout this whole entire independent circuit, backyard circuit. It don't matter where. I will be there. And I will spank that ass until there's nobody left. And that's just how I feel. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, then. And that lets everyone else know, you know, expect what, what, what's going to be happening, or at least what's going through. All right. Yeah. So... Thank you again for coming on to the show. Yeah, yeah. All right. It was Tag team champ. Here, you know. <laughs> so, thank you everyone for watching this Flashpoint. You know, like like if you haven't are part of the channel, go ahead and subscribe. You know, put, click that bell so you get the notification that we are still going on. Flashpoint's still happening. Just like oh, yeah. crazy. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, oh, yeah, brother. You and me still gained WrestleMania 3, brother.